if this A represents a Leslie matrix with these eigenvalues and associated eigenvectors, then if I want to look at the long-term behavior of that population, it would look like T is equal to C1, and then our X1 is 4, 1, and our lambda 1 was 3. So that'll be 3 to the T plus C2, negative 4, 3, and our other lambda was negative 1, so negative 1 to the T. And what we've been asked for in the problem is to look at the stable age distribution, which means we're looking at the ratio of either parents to offspring or offspring to parents. This, although we've written it as a single equation, is secretly two equations. Because remembering that this is a vector, this actually is saying, that if I multiply this out, we kind of have two rows over here, and we definitely have two rows over there, meaning that our x of t, we can read by pulling off the top. So I'd have 4c1, oops, 4c1, 3 to the t, minus 4c2, times negative 1 to the t. And for y of t, I'm now going to read off those bottom rows. So I'd have c1 plus 3c2 times negative 1 to the t. I keep saying t in my head and writing all kinds of other things. Okay. So now, if I'm looking for the long-term behavior of this system, and specifically I'm looking at the long-term behavior of this offspring to parent ratio in this case, I'm going to save myself some space. So if I'm looking for the ratio, then I'm going to be dividing this. And if I'm looking for the long-term behavior, that means I'm looking for the limit as t approaches infinity. Now we have to think back to our 17a skills. If I take t to infinity, 3 to the infinity is infinity. Negative 1 to the infinity, well, that's garbage because I'm alternating between negative 1 and positive 1, so that's not even useful. And um, now I've got 3 to the infinity, so some more infinity and some more garbage. Good news is we have at least one technique to get us out of garbage over garbage. And that's going to be, since we are taking the limit as t approaches infinity, I'm going to look for what in here is headed to infinity the fastest. And that's going to be that 3 to the t term. So I'm going to go through this entire piece, and I'm going to divide every single term by 3 to the t. So I'm going to divide this by 3 to the t, and divide this by 3 to the t, and divide this by 3 to the t, and divide this by 3 to the t. Now what that's going to do for us as a limit Well now on the top those 3 to the t's have canceled out and I'm just looking at 4c1 minus and here I'm going to be careful about this well negative 1 to the t over 3 to the t I'm going to regroup that to say negative 1 third raised to the t power and similarly, I'm going to clean up the bottom so that the bottom here looks like C1 plus 3C2, negative one-third to the T power. Looking back to, again, 17A, we know what this limit looks like. This is our, we talked about it in the context of a geometric series. When I have an r to the n, well, this is kind of like my r to the n. This r, absolute value of it, is less than 1, meaning if I multiply 1 third times 1 third times 1 third, those numbers are getting smaller and headed to 0. So overall, this piece is headed to 0, and so is this piece. And once those are gone, 
my C1s will cancel out, and I'm just going to get a 4 over 1. So that means in the long term, we expect to see this ratio of 4 to 1, which matches the eigenvector associated with our largest eigenvalue. And that's always going to work out this way because I'm always, if I get down to this limit piece, I would always be dividing by the thing that's headed to infinity fastest, which is going to be whatever eigenvalue, absolute value of it is the largest. 